because InfoSec students know that certifications are great mile markers to show potential employees some of your skills and abilities. Uh, several people have asked, what are some beginner privacy certifications I should be working toward? And what other cert options are there for advanced specialization? So uh, I know that there are several different types of privacy certs out there, but can we start with some of the certs that our three InfoSec skills subject matter experts teach and what each cert covers? So. Uh, Chris, I'll start with you. You said you were just uh, teaching uh, a couple days ago here. Uh, can you talk about some of the uh, the beginner level ones? Yes, I was teaching uh, for the International Association of Privacy Professionals at its uh, Global Privacy Summit. I was teaching the U.S. Um, CIPP, U.S. Private Sector Privacy course, and that's where I started my journey. You know, I for 35 years, I've been an intelligence uh, professional at different levels, and I decided to walk away from that, become a privacy professional, having no depth or breadth in privacy. And so my first certification was the CIPP US, followed by the CIPP um, European examination. You can always look to the IPP certifications, but InfoSec has done a great job. A number of us have created privacy-related courses that can position you well to develop a foundational understanding of privacy. And I encourage the students and the attendees to look at those courses to build that competence over time and then be able to demonstrate that later in a practical sense. Yeah, again, yeah, I, I really like. I, 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 I mean, the IPP qualifications. There are a number of them are great touchstones into um, in, in, into sort of the way that that a privacy professional thinks and, and deals with things. And you know, they are sort of two day courses, but you know, you, you're going to need to study for a little bit longer than two days to successfully pass the qualifications. But the existing IPP courses include one in U.S. foundational law. That's the SIP US. There's the uh, SIP E, which is um, the European um, privacy law. You might be wondering why is European law uh, relevant to me as a US, but um, if you're working for a large global organization, um, European law has what's an extraterritorial extent. It, it, you know, the GDPR extends out from Europe to any, any to any country that happens to or company that has to happens to be doing business here. Then there is the SIP A for Asian law, the SIP C for Canadian law, with all of which are great foundational courses in sort of the respective jurisdictional law. On top of that, what I find quite interesting is they do a SIP T, which is great if you've been a technologist and you're looking at putting privacy into uh, technology products that you might be designing, so the CIPT. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the CIPM, which is about managing a global privacy program. So it kind of forgets about the local law in Europe or US or Canada and actually puts you in in, in the process of, well, you know, um, in, in, in a case study, it says, you know, I'm a privacy manager. I've come into this case study organization in day one. How do I go about creating a privacy program from day one to, you know, continually improving after year one, two and three? So, you know, the IPP qualifications are a really, really good starter for 10 um, to kind of transition into uh, a privacy crit. Yeah, I love talking Georgia? about certifications. And um, people ask me about <laughs> it, so I wrote a blog on it on johnbandler.com. But uh, SIP US obviously is my favorite. I built a study course for it for InfoSec. And what I like about it also is even though the US is, you know, they call it a patchwork of privacy laws, you got to learn all different laws. Also, the, the body of knowledge gives you a great foundation in legal basics. Uh, and, you know, the IAPP, like I said, calls it privacy law, but you should think of it as cybersecurity and privacy law. And I really enjoyed breaking it down and putting it in simple chunks. Um, so th that would be, if, if you're in the U.S., CIPP U.S., I would say lays a great foundation. I'm biased. Oh, that's all. I admit it. Sure. <laughs> hey, yep, Chris, we can, can I make uh, another yeah. statement? Please, absolutely. Uh, also, look at ISACA. If you already have an information mm -hmm. security background, one of those certs, you know, you're a, C you're a certified information security auditor or one of its certs, ISACA also offers the certified data protection solutions engineer that also mm -hmm. looks to merge information security, cybersecurity, and privacy from an operational standpoint. 
Got it. I'm excited to announce that our InfoSec Skills platform will be releasing a new challenge every month with three hands-on labs to put your cyber skills to the test. Each month, you'll build new skills ranging from secure coding to penetration testing to advanced persistent threats and everything in between. Plus, we're giving away more than $1,000 worth of prizes each month. Go to infosecinstitute.com challenge and start your challenge right now.